morning, Consular. Oh, John, it's been a long while. Sit down. You're quite a stranger around here. Well, I've been busy. Uh, in fact, I heard this is a business call. Are oh, you stuck with the tough case, John? I'm afraid you're right, Herb. A very tough case. Wait a minute. Let me guess. It's the boy who's accused of stabbing the psychologist in the back with an arrow. Tom Chambers, who runs the archery range and sports shop in the edge of town. Mm -hmm. That's right. Sounds to me like you knew something about him. Oh, I used to go out there for target practice occasionally. I suppose he wants help to prove he's innocent? Not exactly, Herb. Well, then what is it? Can you remember where you were at 2.30 on Tuesday afternoon last week? 2.30 Tuesday. No, I'm afraid I can't. I'll have to check with Miss Thompson. She keeps a record of my past appointments in her fashion. Miss Thompson? Yes, Mr. Merritt. Would you bring in my appointment book? I've got to check my whereabouts last Tuesday afternoon. What do you think? I've heard that question asked a thousand times in courtrooms and on the witness stand. I never realized before how it felt when you honestly can't remember. I'm sorry, Mr. Maris. You weren't in court, and you weren't in the office all afternoon. You left for lunch without saying a word and never came back. That's odd. Is it so very important? Very important. At 2.30 last Tuesday afternoon, Dr. Von Heisinger was killed in his office in the presence of his patient, Tom Chambers. What's all this got to do with where I was? Tom Chambers swears under oath that a man came in the office through a back door and plunged an arrow into the doctor's back. He swears he recognized the man. He identifies the killer as Herbert L. Maris. <laughs> I tell you, there are no other angles. I've been here before. I talked with Mrs. Chambers and Roy Duggan, that partner of theirs. Maybe you didn't ask the right kind of questions. I didn't come in from the corridor and kill the doctor, but somebody else might have. I'm sorry. There's only one other key to that office. And the janitor of the building has that. At the time the murder could have been committed, he was downstairs in the lobby sweeping in plain view of a dozen witnesses. You're convinced that no one else entered or left there? Tom Chambers was alone with the doctor in the office. He admits it. He admits he brought the arrows. He admits there was a quarrel. But he doesn't admit to murder. Well, that might be very soon. Looks like we have some visitors. How is he, Lieutenant? Your husband's fine, Mrs. Chambers. Mr. Maris here just had a long talk with him. Tom asked me to represent him. Well, you see, I told you everything would be all right, Betty. With you on the case, Mr. Maris, I'm sure we have nothing to worry about. Well, I'm afraid it isn't quite that simple. But you know my husband is innocent. We have to prove that first, Mrs. Chambers. Well, how can we help? You can start by telling Mr. Maris what you told me about your partner's attack on you. Attack? Well, it wasn't an attack, really, Betty. I didn't want to upset you. We just had words, you might say. Tom's the gentlest guy in the whole world. He just blows up every once in a while. Blows up? He took a swing at you, didn't he? Well, he got a little excited, that's all. That's why I wanted him to see Dr. Von Heisinger. What did you two quarrel about? Our new sports shop. You see, Tom and Roy have been saving for five years for the money. It was Tom's dream to expand the business. Well, the trouble was, we weren't ready for it yet. I tried to tell Tom that we should hold off for another year. He quarreled with you too, didn't he? Well, I... I... Excuse me. Watch out. See you, Miss Larry. Thank you. I'm going to get back to work. Hello. Excuse me. Yes, this is Herbert Maris. Murder. Grimes knew Chambers was innocent. If you could have heard him... I would have if you'd have told me where you were going. He wouldn't have talked if you'd been there. Besides, he wanted money. And now he won't talk to anybody. Maybe... Maybe somebody overheard him call me to set up the appointment. Herb, I checked on that. Grimes called from a bar and grill near the Osborne building. The bartender said there were only two other customers in there at the time, and one of them knew Grimes. A friend? I'll let you judge for yourself. Send Hard Nose in there. Hard Nose? Mm-hmm. Uh, Anthony J. Devanna, and they don't call him Hard Nose for nothing. All right, all right. So what's the beef, Lieutenant? Sit down, Hard Nose. Who needs it? I've been sitting for three hours ever since you hauled me in here. And you're likely to be sitting a lot longer unless you cooperate. Cooperate? What's to cooperate? I ask you, Mr. Uh... Maris is the name. I'm an attorney. Lawyers, cops and lawyers, always gang up on an honest citizen. Now listen, Hard Nose, nobody's ganging up on you. 
All we want is the truth. But I already told you, honest. It was like quiet, Will and I didn't hear nothing. You admitted you knew Grimes, and that he owed you money for playing the horses. Look, in my business, a lot of people owe me money. But do you think I'd be sucker enough to knock a guy off for $300? Ain't you ever heard about inflation? This is nothing to joke about, hard nose. Whether you know it or not, you're a suspect. The way you talk, you think that I was the only guy in the joint when the guy made a phone call. What about the dame? There was a lady present. I don't know from no ladies. It was a dame. She works for some doctors across the street, always in there for breaks and lunchtime. It used to be a good, legitimate little bar. Ain't it a drag the way some of these characters will louse up a joint? You said she worked for a doctor. Yeah, Vaughn somebody. I don't know his name. Where is she now? I bet she's over there right now warming up a stool. But I've already told you everything that I know, Lieutenant. I believe that I did see a man talking on the telephone. Is that a crime? The bartender said that when Grimes left, you followed him out. But I went back to the office. I had some work to do there, cleaning up the files. Well, you can check with the building manager if you'd like. We have checked. Well, then why are you hounding me for? I don't give a care about your painter. It's a psychopath that killed Dr. Von Heisinger that I'm interested in. Chambers swears he's innocent. Nobody left or entered the office. I was there all the time. You were there alone, you could have gone in the office, taken one of the arrows and stabbed him. Stabbed Victor? Victor? I mean Dr. Von Heisinger. You thought a great deal of your employer, didn't you? I was in love with him. Now all I'm doing now is waiting. It may sound callous to you, but I'm going to come in here and drink a toast the night they put Tom Chambers in the chair. Grimes knew Chambers was innocent. If you could have heard him... I would have if you'd have told me where you were going. He wouldn't have talked if you'd been there. Besides, he wanted money. And now he won't talk to anybody. Maybe... Maybe somebody overheard him call me to set up the appointment. Herb, I checked on that. Grimes called from a bar and grill near the Osborne building. The bartender said there were only two other customers in there at the time, and one of them knew Grimes. A friend? I'll let you judge for yourself. Send hard nose in there. Hard nose. Mm -hmm. uh, Anthony J. Devanna, and they don't call him hard nose for nothing. All right, all right. So what's the beef, Lieutenant? Sit down, hard nose. Who needs it? I've been sitting for three hours ever since you hauled me in here. And you're likely to be sitting a lot longer unless you cooperate. Cooperate? What's to cooperate? I ask you, Mr. Uh... Maris is the name. I'm an attorney. Lawyers, cops and lawyers, always gang up on an honest citizen. Now listen, Hot Nose, nobody's ganging up on you. All we want is the truth. But I already told you, honest, it was like quiet, Will and I didn't hear nothing. You admitted you knew Grimes, and that he owed you money for playing the horses. Look, in my business, a lot of people owe me money. But do you think I'd be sucker enough to knock a guy off for $300? Ain't you ever heard about inflation? This is nothing to joke about, Hot Nose. Whether you know it or not, you're a suspect. The way you talk, you think that I was the only guy in the joint when the guy made a phone call. What about the dame? There was a lady present. I don't know from no ladies. It was a dame. She works for some doctors across the street, always in there for breaks and lunchtime. It used to be a good, legitimate little bar. Ain't it a drag the way some of these characters will louse up a joint? You said she worked for a doctor. Yeah, Vaughn somebody. I don't know his name. Where is she now? I bet she's over there right now warming up a stool. <laughs> I've already told you everything that I know, Lieutenant. I believe that I did see a man talking on the telephone. Is that a crime? The bartender said that when Grimes left, you followed him out. But I went back to the office. I had some work to do there, cleaning up the files. Well, you can check with the building manager if you'd like. We have checked. Well, then why are you hounding me for? I don't give a care about your painter. It's a psychopath that killed Dr. Von Heisinger that I'm interested in. Chambers swears he's innocent. Nobody left or entered the office. I was there all the time. You were there alone? You could have gone in the office, taken one of the arrows and stabbed him. Stabbed Victor? Victor? I mean Dr. Von Heisinger. You thought a great deal of your employer, didn't you? I was in love with him. Now all I'm doing now is waiting. 
sound callous to you, but I'm going to come in here and drink a toast the night they put Tom Chambers in the chair. I told you, Herb, no help there, and I'm afraid when the medical report comes in, it'll certify that Tom Chambers is mentally disturbed. Isn't everybody? Never mind the philosophy. I'm going over the Osborne building, take another look around. You want to come along? No, I'm still not sure we've got all the facts. I'd like to talk to Betty Chambers again. All right, I'll meet you at the archery shop later. Good. <laughs> Pretty good at moving tires. Keep them up. All right, let's go. Cupid. 